Hello, I'm Evan Green. I'm a volunteer at the Wyoming State Museum here in Cheyenne, and I want to welcome you to this next episode of Firearms Friday. I've been tasked with the really great opportunity of updating the inventory information on the museum's collection of firearms. So it's really an enjoyable process, and I get to look at and handle uh, some really amazing, interesting historical firearms. And we have two today that we want to talk about. And sort of the trigger for this episode was a friend of mine who uh, observed this particular revolver. And I said, this is, a, this is an 1849 Colt percussion pocket revolver. And he said, what? They must have had really big pockets. What do you mean it's a pocket revolver? Look at the size of the thing. And I said, well, you have to understand the history and what, what, what preceded this particular revolver, which, by the way, was the most popular percussion firearm that Colt manufactured. Over a period of many years, more than 350,000 of these in over 200 variations were manufactured by Colt. And the variations included the number of chambers. This happens to be a six shot. Some came without this loading lever underneath the barrel. And they came in a variety of barrel lengths. So again, the most popular percussion firearm manufactured by Colt. And again, it replaced this model, which is an 1848 third model Colt Dragoon. Again, we have a percussion revolver, and it's quite large and was often carried in holsters on your saddle, not necessarily on your belt. And I want to just mention the predecessor of the Dragoon model was the Colt Walker. And this was uh, a huge revolver. It weighed 4.9 pounds loaded, was 15 and a half inches long, and uh, was the most powerful revolver available until 1935 when the 357 Magnum was introduced by Smith & Wesson. So the Walker revolver was a little bit different. It was somewhat larger, the cylinder was longer, and there were only 1,100 of those made. The thousand were purchased by the military and issued to soldiers in the Mexican War. Uh, the 100 were available for civilian sales. And again, with only 1,100 of those made, they are quite rare uh, because the soldiers were unfamiliar with this type of revolver. They were used to a single shot pistol. Sometimes they overcharged it, sometimes they put a conical bullet in backwards, so there was a fairly high rate of failure from uh, ruptured cylinders or ruptured barrels. In May of 2018, a cased civilian model of the Colt Walker sold at auction for $1.4 million. It was in pristine condition, but that will give you some idea of the rarity and desirability of the Colt Walker. So if you got granddad's old pistol stuck up in the attic somewhere, you might take a look, and it would be better than winning the lottery. Unlikely, but um, again, a quite valuable revolver. This uh, has inscribed on the cylinder USMR, which stands for United States Mounted Rifles, which were the Dragoon troops uh, during the Mexican War. It was also popular after the war as a civilian uh, revolver on the American frontier. Um, and because of its size, it and the Walker and the previous two models of the Colt Dragoon were, again, often carried in holsters on your saddle as opposed to uh, a holster on your belt. They were generally issued in pairs, and common term was horse pistols because you carried them on your horse. For cultural reference, if you watched the TV series Lonesome Dove, Gus McRae carried a Colt Walker and uh, whacked the surly bartender with it in uh, one of my favorite scenes. Also, in the original True Grit movie with John Wayne, 
the girl, Maddie, was carrying her father's revolver in a paper bag, and it was also a Colt Walker. So Colt third model Dragoon, very nice, very nice specimen that we have in the collection, and the Colt pocket model. Again, this being the absolutely most popular revolver that Colt manufactured during the 19th century. It's very popular with uh, the gold rush crowd. The timing was perfect in 1849 when this model became available. So once again, if you have questions or comments about uh, our videos, please record your comments uh, in the appropriate place below or stop by the museum and chat with us with your questions. Thank you for watching.